that's gonna be great. How good is it gonna it's be? It's time to begin the ritual. <laughs> been a while since we made a video um, we've been hard at work at concert too we've been doing all the detail work and rehearsals and uh, really fine-tuning everything so we're really excited to be presenting this to you on Saturday being that Saturday is less than a week away um, this is about the time where we tell you about some stuff that's going on as we lead up to the concert so I jotted it all down to make sure I didn't miss anything um, so first things first on Thursday, January 23rd, Adam will be giving a concert preview lecture at the Seattle Public Library. It's at noon, and uh, feel free to come in and have a chat with Adam or listen to some of the stuff he has to say. He usually has a really good story or two as well, so we invite you to join us for that. If you can't make it to that, you're always welcome to come check out the video that Cal Lewin helps us make every concert, so, so thank you, Cal, again. Um, I'll put a link in the description for that one. And uh, let's see, what else do we have? Oh, that's really about it. Um, speaking of the public library, I'm about two blocks away right now. So I thought it'd be fun to go check out and see what we can dig up on Ruth Gist. She's become a really important composer for us here at the Seattle Phil. Um, I don't know if you remember, two years ago, we gave the, the US premiere of her second symphony. Well, this fourth symphony that is programmed for our Saturday concert is another US premiere. That's a fairly big deal because given the rich musical, classical music history and cultural richness in the United States, how did we miss this? I'll tell you what, it's really great music. We invite you to the concert. It's gonna be good. She's got some really awesome melodies and uh, we're excited to share that with you. So please join us. Later in this video, we'll also get to meet our clarinet section. They've got some really cool stories to tell and uh, it's really just kind of fun to, to learn about the people behind the instruments as, uh, as you see us on stage. So stay tuned for that as well. All right, let's go to the library. So there's not that much info on Ruth Gibbs. I guess surprisingly or not surprising, depending on how you look at it. Um, she's born in 1921, died in 1999. Uh, studied with some really big names like Ray Vaughan Williams, and um, but just largely ignored by the classical music community, especially in Britain, which is really kind of unjust, you know? So that really makes Saturday a little bit more special now because 
this is the first time her music's gonna be heard, or at least her fourth symphony is gonna be heard in the United States. So if you wanna be a part of the crowd that is gonna be the first to hear in the United States, come join us on Saturday. It's a really cool symphony. It's got some really great melodies, and so we invite you to come along. There's a lot of people that come together to help bring this music to life, and so let's go get to know our clarinet section. And uh, you get to see who, who gets to play those and uh, what what made them choose their instrument and maybe even why they why they keep playing. So let's go meet our clarinet section. So I'm here with our clarinet section. I'm just gonna introduce you to them. They have some fun stuff in our upcoming concert and uh, we'll, let's learn about some of the fun stuff that they do. <laughs> so, hello clarinet section. Hello. Um, let's go my right, your left, uh, to, to your right. Um, so tell me what your name is and how long you've been playing the clarinet. This is the clarinet section. I'm William Blaney. I've been playing principal clarinet since 2010. Yeah, it's my first time in the symphony and I've been playing clarinet for seven years. Uh, I'm Sophie and this is the second time I played with Seattle Phil. I also sat in on the planets and I've been playing clarinet for 12 years, I think. I'm Erin. Um, I have been playing in the Seattle Phil for about seven or eight years and I've been playing clarinet for 26 years. And this concert I'll be playing the E-flat clarinet, which is um, one of the smallest members of the clarinet family. Sounds good. We'll come back to that. Because <laughs> we also see Brad. Yes, Brad, and I've been playing bass clarinet since I think 1972, something like that. Wow. So, okay, so this is a larger clarinet section than normal, right? Yes. Or? yes. Normally we have three people. We have two okay. E-flat clarinets and the bass clarinet. Okay. This time, because of the E-flat clarinet and the bigger parts, we have four. Five. Well, count them, Brad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so so what made you choose the clarinet? Did it, is it was this a, an instrument that you like really fell in love with when you were little, or did it like somehow choose you in a certain weird way? I've got a story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So in my band, they had not enough low instruments, and so uh, the director asked me to play bass because they didn't have enough trombones and stuff like that. And I fell in love with it, and I really loved it. And then uh, something magical happened. One summer, I this is like the first summer after I started playing bass clarinet, uh, I was at home watching Evening at Pops, and they were playing uh, On the Trail by Ferdy Grofe, you know, from the Grand Canyon Suite. And there's this part where there's this bass clarinet solo, and and it just blew me away. And I just, I just remember standing up and saying, I want to do that. I want to be that guy. And now you're that guy. I'm that guy. Now. <laughs> and yeah. didn't you say that at some point in your Seattle Phil career you ended up playing that very? Yes. As a matter of fact, when I first started out with the group, we, we programmed it and uh, and I got to play on it and, and it was a, a big honor. I took it very seriously. I'd gone out and uh, taken a lesson with Bill and I'd uh, taken a lesson with Larry McDaniel, the bass clarinetist with the Seattle Symphony. And uh, just to work on that part, I, and I went and got the Seattle Symphony recording, and and I went up to Adam after there. And he goes, you know, I've been really working very hard on this, and I got this great recording of it. And he goes, oh, I like that very much. And he turned it over, handed it back to me, and said, I'm the producer on this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's pretty cool. That's It's kind of cool that this is all kind of coming together like that, you know, for, for you. And Okay, so... E flat clarinet. E flat clarinet. What's the story with this? Um, so I first played E flat clarinet in college. Oh, actually, I guess I played some in high school. Um, got to play it on Bolero um, at my youth symphony. But then the first time I really got to play it was in college. My orchestra was playing Mahler's Second Symphony. There's a big E flat clarinet solo that's in it that's symphony. beautiful. I love Mahler too. Hint, hint, Adam. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I got to play it and kind of fell in love with E-flat clarinet and then also got to play Richard Strauss's Till Eulenspiegel and 
and Ravel is a Daphnis and Chloe playing all of those E flat clarinet parts. So I got to have some get some great E flat clarinet experience during college. It's pretty high pitched. It can be a beast as far as intonation is going, um, especially. Absolutely. It's just it's it's a lot harder to kind of it's it's often really sharp. Or if you ever have to, you know, things like Till Eulenspiegel at the end, he throws in a couple of piccolo players that you're supposed to be right in tune with, <laughs> which is really just a nightmare. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, so they're just a fun things like that. It's a little bit tighter embouchure than regular clarinet. Everything's a little bit tinier, so it's um, your fingers are all closer together, which can feel a little strange. But you get to also play a lot of really fun parts, and kind of it's used a lot as sort of a characterful instrument. If you think of Till Eulenspiegel, so you get to have a lot of fun with it. Just. <laughs> And that's how the E-flat clarinet comes in wow. at the beginning of Ruth Gibbs. And that's the middle of the E-flat clarinet range right there. Okay. Um, which is significantly higher than where you'd be at on the same keys on a regular clarinet. So, so yeah, that's that. It's fun. It's cute. It's tiny. <laughs> awesome. You know. Thank you. Uh, you should have Brad play his instrument. Yeah. So they can, you know, hear the... <laughs> And then that's the most famous five notes on the bass clarinet. And what's that from? The Sugar Plum Fairy from ah, The Cracker. <laughs> gotcha. There you go. So, okay. Let's go over on this side. What made you choose a clarinet? And what's a fun story you might have about your clarinet playing experience, if you have one? Um, well, I'll go do with the fun one. But okay. <laughs> so in Sorry. high school, I played with pit orchestra a lot, and one year we did Urine Town. I don't know if anyone's heard of that, but it's like, <laughs> I love that musical. Um, but so it was a really small pit, and we actually got to be on stage and like do like be part of the play. Like usually you're just like shoved in a corner and no one's really paying attention to you. Mm-hmm. But this part, like we got to dress up as like prisoners and like walk on stage and just be like, Rah! and it was really fun. <laughs> nice. I guess that's not really clarinet specific, but well, I was playing clarinet. It's still so. fun. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Don't get the normal you have kind of yeah i started playing clarinet because my mom's a, a flute player and when it was time to pick an instrument in fifth grade i really looked up to my mom and i wanted to pick an instrument that i could make music with her and you know continue that throughout our lives and my mom told me that there's a lot of flute players out there so i was like i'm gonna play clarinet which there are a lot of clarinet players but it was something that i could really connect with my mom through and it's it's really brought us closer throughout my life. That's so awesome. That's yeah. so sweet. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you still play then? Or? Um, yeah, me and my mom, we play in the Greenwood concert band together. And um, when I can convince her to, uh, we do some flute clarinet duets. That's awesome. That's cool. Way cool. Well, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Thanks. Bill. <laughs> I fell in love with the clarinet the first time I heard it. And I couldn't walk when I first heard it. I was crawling. Really? So that's how young I was and I fell in love with it and the reason I heard it was my father was a really fine clarinetist which I was a dumb kid I didn't know that but he'd go to the other end of the house and practice so I'd crawl to the other end and I'd sit outside his practice room and listen to him practice one day he came out and saw me sitting there and asked me what I was doing I got a big smile I said would you show me how to do that and then he told me about baby teeth I had my baby teeth, and if you wait till your baby teeth fall out and you get your adult teeth, if you still want to know, ask me. So several years went by, my baby teeth fell out, I got my adult teeth. I went and asked him if he remembered saying that, which he said he did, and then I asked him if he'd show me. And then we sat down and had our first clarinet lesson. So, That's so wow. cool. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, I think, I think our break. I think our break's over, so we got to head back. <laughs> so that's our clarinet section. There you have it. I don't really have much more to say other than we're really excited for Saturday. We hope, if you can, to come join us. Tickets are in the description below. And uh, Ruth Gibbs, US premiere. Actually, there's two US premieres, one by also Mel Boni. So come on in. It's gonna be fun. <laughs>